Welcome to another parent-teacher video lesson from the earlygiftedmanual.com, a free website for homeschooled children three to seven years old and their parents that promotes and develops giftedness at an early age. I am Gary Blank, the creator of that site and your host and facilitator for this video and all of the videos in my educational program. As the video lessons are designed to work in conjunction with the program on my website, I ask you to, at some point, click on the URL link in the description box below, and this action will take you to the earlygiftedmanual.com. By doing that, you will be able to put this lesson and all of the video lessons here on my channel in the proper context of the total program that I am presenting to you and your child. Welcome to lesson 56. This lesson is called Math Games, and in this lesson we will look at three uh, different math games or activities. And uh, the first one will be Sudoku Puzzles. Uh, the second will be the set game and a deck of set cards. And the third will be uh, something called Fascination Checkers. So here are the materials you will need. Um, I have two Sudoku puzzles I've, I've, uh, to work on here for us today. And you can get uh, lots of Sudoku, Sudoku puzzles free online. You can print them out, you can work online, and there is a link for that on the Early Gifted Manual. Just go to this lesson number, Lesson 56. And there's a great website for, that for uh, uh, a mere $15 you can get all of the Sudokus you, you'd ever want and print them out. So they're, they're readily available is the point I'm trying to make. Um, okay, those are the Sudoku puzzles. Uh, you will need a, uh, a deck of set cards. And here's what they look like. And we'll talk more about those in a little while. There's 81 of them there in a deck. Um, this printable from the Early Gifted Manual called Fascination Checkers. You can make a, a copy or two of this printable. And you'll need game pieces, because this is actually the game board. And, uh, you know, some people have actually have sets of fancy game pieces, but I'm just going to use uh, these Unifix cubes. They'll work out real well, and I'll show you in a minute how I'm going to use those two different colors. And now I'd like to show you uh, how you can uh, teach your child how to do, uh, uh, how to solve, I should say, a Sudoku puzzle. And of course, I think it goes without saying that uh, it, it will take a little bit of time before your child can do one of these uh, on his own. So uh, you have to be patient, work, work with your child until you can see that he's ready to tackle it on his own. And, even when he or she is ready to do that, uh, if they need help, uh, just be around and, uh, and check on them. Because these are very challenging. This is what I would uh, call advanced, you know, very advanced for a, a young child of three or four and, and still advanced even for a child of five or six. But um, in my classes, I always, I always had several kids who loved, you know, my kindergarten and preschool classes especially my kindergarten class, I, I had kids that loved to do Sudoku puzzles and were pretty good at them. So, um, and they're great developers of, uh, of, of uh, multi-level thinking and, and problem-solving ability. We'll talk about that as we go along here. All right, this uh, particular one I have here, and this is what we'll be working with, is called a four by four Sudoku puzzle. It's the simplest one there is, and uh, this, this will be the, the place to start, the right one for your child. Um, it's, uh, and, and the reason for that, and we'll find out as we go along here, is there's never a question as to which number goes in these squares. It's not a, there's never a situation where, where you don't know. You can always positively put a number in the square and move along with the puzzle. All right, so as you can see, there are 16 squares, and it's a grid, obviously, and um, we have columns, 
we have rows, and also we have boxes. And boxes are these four together, these four together, these four together, and these four together. And you can kind of, they're delineated because the line is a little thicker there. And that's, those distinctions are all very important. And as you can see, uh, as it's a puzzle, we have some given numbers. And in a Sudoku, there's always numbers that are given to you. And you have to find all the other numbers in these blank boxes to complete the, the puzzle. So uh, let's uh, get started on solving this. And here is really the only rule and directive that you need to know for uh, solving a Sudoku puzzle. And here it is. Each column, each row, and each box must contain all of the numbers one through four with no repeats. In other words, uh, let's, let's pick this uh, column as an example. There's a two and a four there. To complete that column, uh, you would need a one or a three in either of these boxes. Uh, to complete this row, it has two and three, so you'd need a one and a four, and we don't know yet where those are gonna go, but that's what you would need. You could not have like two threes in a row or two threes in a column. You can't repeat numbers. So, uh, uh, and, and as we go along here, you'll, you'll see more of what I mean. So, um, you know, sometimes the hardest uh, place, uh, the hardest thing to do with these puzzles is to figure out where to start. And uh, um, I think before we do that, you can, uh, you can, if you want, you can let your child uh, handle the pencil here and be the marker, but you're gonna be doing a lot of thinking out loud and hopefully your child will be thinking out loud with you as you, as you work on the logic of solving uh, this Sudoku puzzle. So uh, let me see, where was I? Uh, back to the start of the puzzle. Um, you really want to start in the easiest place, uh, and in other words, where you have the most information. Um, in other words, uh, in this particular puzzle, you wouldn't want to work in this column. There's only one number there. That's not a lot of information. But look, in, these, in this column here and this column here, there are two numbers. And in, in this box here and this box here, there are two numbers. So um, you always want to start where there's the most information. And sometimes there are several places. Well, always there are several places you can start. So you just have to to pick one. And I'm looking at this puzzle here, and I think I'm going to start in this box here. So we have a two, a three, so what are we missing in this box? A one and a four, correct? Well, but which box gets the one and which box gets the four? Well, I know that this one gets the one because we can't have two fours in this column. And I hope you followed that. So by process of elimination, this must be the box that gets the four. So look at that, we're, we're off and running. We already have two numbers here on our uh, Sudoku. And uh, of course, you know, you're, you're thinking out loud and, and hopefully as your child, uh, uh, we, you do a few of these with him or her, they'll start thinking out loud too and uh, be able to do it on their own. Okay, back to the puzzle. Um, let's see, we've got, look at this, we have three numbers in this row, so by process of elimination, we have one, two, three, it has to be four. All right, where else is an easy, is uh, what I call easy pickings? Um, look at this column, we have three numbers, a one, a two, a four, what number is missing? That's right, a three, so your child can write that in now. And let's see, where could we go next? Um, I'm just gonna take a guess here, and if it's wrong, I can always go somewhere else. We could uh, work in this box here, which has a two and a four, so we're missing uh, a one and a three. Well, I don't think we can go to that box because we don't have enough information over here. I don't see any ones or threes where we can differentiate, so maybe we should move somewhere else. 
Uh, here's a three and a four, so we'll need a one or a two in either of these boxes. Well, I know that the one has to go here, because if we put a two here, we'd have two twos in this row. So that tells you that needs a one. And um, by process of elimination, we have a one, a three, and a four. So a two has to go there. So you're probably seeing already how you're, you logically work your way, uh, you and your child can work your way through one of these puzzles and uh, and uh, actually, you know, consider several possibilities at once. That's, a, that's the strength of it, uh, multi-leveled thinking. Uh, let's see. Now, uh, where else can we uh, fill in a number? What's the easiest place? Well, look at this row, row one up here. We have a two, a three, and a four. And all we need to do is complete that with a one. And we look at the puzzle and go, okay, what's the next? easiest uh, place we can go to here. And I'm looking at this column has three numbers. So uh, actually there's two places we can go uh, that I'm seeing, but let's go to this column and a one, a two, and a four, there's a three missing. So we can fill that in. And now all we have to do is fill in these two boxes by process of elimination. There's a one, a two and a four, so we need a three there. And there's a two, a three, and a four. So we need a one there. And one thing you need to do uh, once you complete the puzzle, solve the puzzle, so to speak, is, uh, and you should teach your child how to do this because it's very important is to check to make sure you in fact solved it correctly. And here's how you can do it. You go column by column, row by row, and box by box to ensure that you in fact have all of the numbers in each of those. So uh, column one, one, two, three, four. Column two, one, two, three, four. Column three, one, two, three, four. Column four, one, two, three, four. And of course you can do the same thing with rows. Make sure all four numbers are there and no repeats. And then lastly, look at the boxes and look that all, to make sure that all four numbers are there and no repeats. So quickly, let's just uh, go through another one here because, uh, you know, just for the heck of it so you can see maybe one more. And I'm going to go through this one a little faster, so I hope you can follow me. And um, let's see, we don't have very much information at all on this one, do we? Only four given numbers. So I think I'll start, it doesn't matter, I think I'll start here. We have a two and a four in this column, so we need a one and a three. Well, absolutely, the three has to go here, because if we put the one here, then we'd have two ones in this row. So there's a good start. All right, and now, you know, our next, well, our only information we can work with really is, uh, uh, maybe our only information, it looks like it to me, is this uh, column here. We have a one and a four, so we need a two and a three. Well, the three has to go here, because if I put the two here, we'd have two twos. All right, we're off and running. Let's see, where could we go next? Um, I'm just going to guess and start up here. In this box, we have a one and a two, so we need a three or a four in either of these boxes. And if I look over here, that tells me where they go. And the three has to go there. And the four must go there, right? Otherwise, uh, you'd have two fours and two threes there. Uh, so hopefully you're, you're really starting to see the, the logic now of how to solve these. And then we go to the easiest spot, correct? Uh, look at, the, we only need to find the, the missing number in these two uh, um, rows. And, uh, two, three, four, we're missing one. In the second row, one, three, four, we're missing two. And slowly we're solving the puzzle. Let's see, where could we go next? Maybe down here, we have a three and a four, so we need a one and a two. 
And these numbers will tell you where the one goes and the two goes. And I, I don't even think I have to tell you my thinking now. The one goes there, the two goes there. All right, now we, all we need to do is complete these two rows, one, two, three, four, and one, two, four, so we need a three there. And of course, go back and check it, uh, since this is a video, I'm not going to do that, but I showed you how to check. I think I have it right, but you really do need to check every one, like, like I showed you on the first puzzle, to ensure that uh, you solve the puzzle correctly. So, um, like I said, uh, as you do these, keep doing more and more of them and, and uh, scaffold your child's learning, so to speak. Uh, you know, uh, help him out, help him uh, out with, with his or her thinking. You can do a little talking out loud, but not too much. Don't do the puzzle for her. And keep uh, scaffolding until the child can uh, do it on his own. And um, I, I love Sudokus because uh, it's just, uh, you know, it's the next level of thinking for a young child. Obviously, um, when a child is solving a Sudoku, they have to consider, consider several possibilities simultaneously, and that's the beauty of it. And that's a big jump uh, in the thinking processes, processes of a young child. So that's, that's why I like these so much. And if your child is really, really good at these, uh, and some kids are, uh, you could move on to the higher level Sudokus, six by sixes and nine by nines and 12 by 12s. They're much bigger and they're much more difficult, of course. So um, uh, if you do that, you're kind of on your own. You'll have to go online and, and look at strategies to solve. And but. That's a, there is a, trust me, there is a big jump between uh, uh, the 4x4 four four and the 6x6. Six six. So, uh, you know, um, if your child does move on to the 6x6 six six puzzle, uh, he or she will need a lot of support, and you'll have to understand it as well.